Welcome back. Another episode, Ghetto Correspondent News Network. It's your boy, Aunt Dammit. Frankie Diamond's over there. Sir, sir. Make sure you guys uh, like, subscribe, share, all that fly shit. Um, a lot of shit's been going on, so the world's starting to open back up, I guess. Is it? What's what's happening? You were just trying saying something to, about Miami. They're trying to slow down the quarantine. Like, a lot of people, so they opening up shit. But if you see other countries across the world, they opened up, then they shut back down. Like, Italy shut back down. A few other um, places, they still playing it safe. They're putting their people, people's lives ahead of the economy. America's doing the opposite. Like, yeah, all they care not having a recession. So they like, fuck it, let's open everything back up. And beaches has been open back up, but Miami opened up the beach uh, probably a month ago, really. But more people are flocking there because the weather's so nice. They can't yeah. help them. They don't can't help themselves. It's Memorial Day weekend, but they have, you got to wear a mask to go to the beach now. <clears throat> I know how crazy that's going to look. Yeah, like a lot of shit is not normal. It's not going to be normal no time soon. Like, I'm not going to the beach with a mask on my face. I'm just, I'm not doing that. that nah, be- do you, do you wear one out in public? It depends on like, um, I'm so, so with it. I got like three masks, but it depends on where I'm at, where I'm going. Right. I don't wear it 24 like seven because I can't really. You can't breathe, breathe in them motherfuckers. So imagine no. being on a hot ass beach. Exactly. With a mask <laughs> on, like, motherfuckers going to be dead. There's going to be a lot of up. beach wells out there. They bras and they bikinis out there looking like Scorpio, Scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But like um, Styles P said something. He, I was watching Styles P. He said, "Yeah, I got masks, but he says I gotta. He said I can't speak for nobody else, but I gotta let my body take in a certain amount of uh, a certain amount of this filth, so my immune system can build up to it." Right. And, I mean, it's kind of like y'all get flu shots. This is kind of like my way of kind of letting my immune system build up. Right. Well, it's basically like with little kids. You're supposed to let, like, when you, little kids, like babies, you're supposed to let them, like, eat some, a little bit amount of a dirt, not like let them out there with mud pies. But they say that that helps build their immune system, too. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Can't be too. Yeah. Too, so you don't want to over. Yeah. Yeah. Some people overdo the shit. And it's like, I, like, I don't know. Do you wear it when you drive it? No, not when I hell no. I ain't okay, I'm pass saying, out. People driving with this shit, so, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uber Yo, driver man. passed out. No. Yeah, motherfucker passed no. out. Yeah, I, I forget where it was, but this was like probably I think like right at the beginning of quarantining, when they like like right as they was like making everybody wear masks. Like no matter where you go, you had to wear a mask, and people were wearing masks in their car it's like you got to be a special kind of stupid to wear a mask inside of your own car like driving with gloves on in your own car like do you not trust yourself you know what i'm saying you sound like you dirty you filthy like come right on. i understand that that yeah, kind of and the other thing i don't understand is stores and businesses closing mad early like what is what is that going to change anything like right i don't understand that everybody closing at six seven o'clock or whatever but they they open in the world, but people gotta just get it focused that just because things are open, a lot of people think that this pandemic is over. I'm like, no, it's still in full swing. They just it's still here. Corona is here to stay, yeah, baby. It, America is just trying to play catch up for the last two months. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like, this shit is far from over. And we and we we kind of screwed. Um, I think me personally, I think that this is, um in some ways bring it back segregation because now you got people afraid to be near someone, you know what I'm saying? Like motherfuckers is crossing whole streets just to not walk by somebody. Black people, white people, Asian people, and like Asian people are getting the fucking rough end of the stick because Donnie Do Dirt out there telling everybody that it's China's fault. <laughs> People just like people are becoming hermits, man. People like just don't want to. I was kind of having a conversation with somebody, and I was like, I haven't really even been hanging out with nobody lately, like, and I kind of don't even have any urge to at the moment, honestly. Like, I'm kind of, I think I needed some time away from people, so when I do get back around, it's gonna be lit. But right, as far as the Asian people and shit, like, 
he, 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 what was that? The Asian lady who asked him a question like last week and he was like, China. He did China. Yeah, thing. ask China. Yeah, she's like, China. Yeah. I'm Chinese. You go, I'm like, well, <laughs> like, Donnie's yeah. funny. She's like, she was ready to slap the shit out of him. I wouldn't yeah. have blamed her though. The shit was funny though. Yeah, it was. You 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 do gotta admit the dude is is quite the character. Unfortunately, that's like the leader of the free world right now, and it's like we just looking like a damn circus to everybody. So that's what America is though, it's entertainment. Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of entertainment, let's jump right into the shits. Um your boy Joe Biden, crazy Uncle Joe was on the Breakfast Club, sat down with your favorite uh, black person, Charlemagne the God. And I, I saw the video you did. You said you said people think that you uh, hate him, um, but yeah. it's because you're critical of him, and you you have that right to. Like we as black people should um, be critical of those who speak for us. Yeah, yeah. I just don't think somebody who is, uh, you know, he's 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 too. Oh, uh, first of all, I just think he's compromised. I think I don't think that every day, I don't think someone who's worth millions of dollars is ever gonna fight as hard for everyday black people as someone who's in the trenches with us. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't think you policy and stuff like that doesn't affect you as much as a wealthy person as someone who's out here living check to check, stretching pennies. You know what I mean? So I don't think him and Al Sharpton speaking buzz. It just comes off like circus at circuses to me. Mm-hmm. It looks like three ring circus. I don't see any other people, Asians, whites, nobody speaking up for them. Like Clint Eastwood don't speak politics for conservatives. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, like, but they do they do vote in um in blocks. Like where I work at is a huge Asian community. Like okay. ninety ninety percent of my customers are probably Asian. And I mean, I'm talking about from their businesses, like the strip, the business strip that um, I work is literally, I think about six dentists, right? And none of them are broke, like six dentists, all Asian, they all got their own shop and everybody is making money. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about to the point where like even the signs on their um, over their, uh, overhangs like are in Chinese or whatever, you know, I don't want to be rude, but it's in that lettering. It's not American. Like they have their own little community. They, if a property goes up for sale, there's like an Asian person that's the realtor. Like, so they, in, in some, in some like have their own like structure set up to where as though they don't have to, they don't have to have nobody stand up and speak for them because they're going to represent together. Yeah. Yeah. And because we don't have that, we have to, sit here and beg uh some people want entertainers to speak for them and then some people we just like myself we just kind of like damn we gotta deal because i just felt like some of the questions Charlemagne asked was kind of weak could ask some better questions but he didn't, i feel like he didn't really get a chance to because what's well, going in right? <laughs> yeah well see i said that if you pay attention to it, right? Like, cause they say all great journalists, the one thing that they should do is when you're interviewing somebody, you let them speak. And Joe Biden kind of just like bit off a little bit more than he can handle because he literally was, was talking the way you, the way you described it in your video where you said he was talking like he was on a block. That was like so perfect because Joe Biden kept trying to like hit home this point of, I was in the projects before like gentrification was cool. And, you know, I was, uh, I had a good, good job at a law firm where uh, Martin Luther King was killed. And, like all of these things, but nothing to the point of like, all right, so what are you doing today? Like, yeah, what nothing, are you going to do right now? It's the last thing relevant. He had to go back to like the Obama administration. But I think he's saying he probably he, he had to lose the black vote after that, but there's still people who you told think me so? that, I thought that was the dagger right there. I thought that was the big knife, but some people was telling me I'm still gonna vote for him. I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> so it, it's my hot take. My hot take. I think if Joe Biden keeps up with this arrogancy the way he was, he might have a fighting chance. Cause that's how Trump came. Trump came mad arrogant. He told you, 
he was disrespectful to Hillary. He was like, she's crooked. She's a thief. Like, he ain't show her no respect. And we're all... The, the race part plays the fact in why I don't think it'll work for Biden because you, you're, you're being arrogant towards black folks. If he was oh, arrogant towards just white folks or whatever, but I think the, the race factor, black people is just going to be like, you're going to turn off the black folks, the few of them that did support you because you was Obama's man, and now they're going to see you for being a crooked white, uh, hunky motherfucker you is in the first place. I think it'll be probably more of, this is true, they definitely going to see him for what he is, but I think it's going to be more of the millennials, like the younger voters, because all of the old folks that love Obama, that's Obama's boy. He can't do no wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, they don't they don't look at stuff like that. They don't watch Breakfast Club. They probably Damn. don't even know about that interview most stuff. The boom, boomers, most of the boomers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the ones that still listen to Steve Harvey every morning. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> they definitely <laughs> still, still catching that ballot for, for Joey. Yeah. Honky Tonk Joe. Yeah, that that's exactly what it was. I mean, he came off as very arrogant to me. Like, I didn't, when I was listening to it, I was like, I don't like this. Like the energy I was getting, I was like, "This, this ain't, this ain't it." You watch the video. The, watch the you, video. You listen to it. Watch the yeah. video. Oh man, it was. I want to see them. He says he's gonna come back when things get normal. I said it, it kind of. I think it's gonna be like the Leo Cohen interview. Yeah, I don't think he's going there. I don't, don't think. think he's he's, I don't think it's well because his PR people they tried to clean it up, right? He, he said that you know he was being. Uh, a wise guy and being cavalier or whatever, and um, they were saying that the comments were, in, huh? Yeah, they get some bad press, right? But I, me personally, like I said, in this day and age, he should have doubled down on it. Like, fuck it. Like, what else you got to lose? If 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 he lost the vote, as we think, or as I like to say, shot himself in the foot, because there's a uh, older black dude at my job. And I asked him about it, and he was like, what the fuck would he say was wrong? Right? And he, like, got so big. But what he said that was so true was he was like, well, we have been mad if a black person said that. As far as what Joey was saying on the on the red was about? No, as far as that comment about if you are having a hard time to decide who to vote between him and Trump, then you ain't black. Like, he said if a black person said that, we probably would not have fucking blinked an eye of course not. yeah because a black people like i said a black person can't be racist of course not that's that's not obvious but it, it wasn't a black person it was a 70 something year old white man who comes from who was born in the jim crow era <laughs> you know right. what i'm saying who probably would have told you to shine his shoes back in the day oh you so <laughs> definitely had some niggas shining his shoes yeah that's a fact tell. You could definitely, you could just tell he, he's that confident, over the top, arrogant white guy. He looks down on niggas. You could just tell he probably oh, he yeah. looks like he looks beneath Charlemagne. I mean, he's like, yeah, man, like come, like he's talking like he's on the block, right? You wouldn't talk to Anderson Cooper like that, nope. And and when he was doing his PR like cleanup, like he was all like on the phone, all calm, and I'm like, this ain't Joe with the fucking cigarette hanging off his lip, like. No. Where, where's that Joe at? The motherfucker that was, uh, as some people like to refer to, as shucking and jiving. He, uh, he John, definitely did. Think, as I said, though, what, now, what people who, who fuck with Obama, like, just that, what's your, does this change the stance on Obama? Like, now that Joe Biden is more like, now that now we know more about Joe Biden's character, has it changed anything on how you felt about Obama as far as, like, as I think birds of a feather kind of flock together, even in business. Uh, to a certain degree, you know, you the people you hang out with kind of is a reflection of your character to a certain to to me. You know what right. I'm saying? Like people, the crowd you with, and I'm like, you align yourself with that guy. And if you, so, if you black and you fuck with Obama, but yet you see his vice president is this snob, like how how does that not change your? You know, does it change your stance on Obama a little bit? Um. If I had to answer that, I would probably say, I, n me personally, no, because I understand like how that game works. Like Joe Biden had to be his VP. 
Like they weren't going to let Obama have anybody else. Like, and if we, if we want to dig deep into the whole conspiracy theory thing, like, all right, let's say that they were like, all right, we're going to let this, this black man be the face, but he has to have a white guy with him because that's quote unquote America. Like imagine if it was two niggas in the white house at the same damn time. Oh man. Somebody would have got killed. Obama and some call weathers looking nigga. Yeah. It will. <laughs> it's everywhere in the world. So so what do what do you think uh Joe Biden has to do? Let's put a put a button on this because me personally Huh? To, dude, what does he have to do for what? To to secure like do you think that this is gonna hurt him or what do you think, think he has did. to do to but we really don't have a choice, though, right? Like, because that's basically how he told us. Like, what are you niggas going to do? <laughs> I think it was funny at the same time. It's like you said, what are you niggas going to do? He put the pressure on niggas. Like, he's basically like, look, you're going to either vote for the lesser evil or deal with 45. But I think some Negroes and some of these niggas, that's what they're going to be called, Negroes. Mm. Some of these Negroes are skin of 45. And they'll still vote for Biden because he's the nicer version of Massa, you know? Right. You got one Massa to let you outside on the weekends and another Massa that, you know, you get one day off. Man. It's your choice. But I don't really think he can. I don't know. I don't think he can. I just think Trump's entertainment factor and all of that, I just think Trump's going to be Trump 2020, honestly. Yeah, he, he, that's what it seems like, too. He's got the persona. Um, some people are thinking that this um, this coronavirus uh, pandemic is going to hurt his chances because of the fact that he let so many people die oh, wow. under his watch when he could have fixed fixed it earlier. I don't know how you could have fixed it, but uh, but when you say that when you brought up the pandemic, now Charlemagne did ask about that, and when he asked Joe Biden about the pandemic, and Biden was like. Um, I, I've just been house quarantined. That was his response. To the <laughs> yeah, whole, that was his response. Yeah. So I was following the rules, man. <laughs> he basically, like, nigga, I was telling. Basically, was like, I was chilling. You know what I'm saying? He was quarantined. And I'm like, so I don't know how you can really. What? What? What, what can you do? Mm. You know what I mean? It's like the bird flu out here. What can you do? I don't. Not that I'm a Trump supporter. I'm trying to defend them, but, but how, I don't see how you. Uh, this isn't like the Hurricane Katrina and Bush and FEMA and all that shit. I don't put it up there with that. But I mean, not as far as a crisis, but I mean, as far as I don't see how you can just blame it on one person. Right. I don't know either, that, man. Yeah, what would you do? <laughs> There's nothing you can do to shut everything down. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think I think what, what they're saying is the fact that as the numbers are growing, like, because I think last night or whatever, I was looking on Twitter and they were saying that as I think it reached like a hundred thousand, this motherfucker's on a golf course somewhere. Oh yeah, that's not a good look. Yeah, when you out there playing golf with Phil Nicholson and them niggas. Right, and people over here <laughs> fucking dying and shit, and like we ain't got enough fucking mask or gloves or anything. And he posting memes on Twitter. No. <laughs> Trump done turned into a Twitter nigga. That's wild. <laughs> That's wild. Best follows on there. Him, I can't get into OJ Simpson. I can't, I can't get myself to hit the follow button on OJ's page. Nah, I ain't following OJ. Mm-mm. Something, something, no. Because okay, he, wow. he gonna do something too wild. <laughs> wow. We all gonna be in court. Everybody that follow him. Well, shit. He he put some video up talking about getting revenge or something. Like, oh Yo, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't need to be talking about anything like that. The word, the, the word re- revenge should not even be in OJ Simpson's uh, yeah. vocabulary. But that's just, I'm plugging OJ's uh, Twitter for people. Nah, I'm I'm all set. <laughs> um, what else has been going on since? Uh, so so that's it with Biden, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't think there's much else we could say. He showed that. I just want to see what's going to happen um, in the next couple of weeks. Like, I'm going to keep a close eye on it because um, this is really fascinating because yeah. this, this is going to show a lot of 
people's true colors and like let we already know where we stand in this country is black and brown people but we're really going to see how these politicians feel about us now especially now that they're trying to open up the country but people still don't have money people still don't have jobs and civil unrest is going to come and you know fucking they're going to get tired of police fucking just killing us for no reason like yeah, 2020 so is not done showing us what's about to no, be real. That's why when I made that video, the first I changed the title like three times. The first title was Joe Biden shows his ass. Then, hmm. then Joe Biden shows his ass on Breakfast Club. Then True Colors, and I'm just like I'm trying to just nail a point. Like I just I just went straight for it. Joe Biden said you ain't black. <laughs> yeah, Joe Biden basically says you niggas ain't shit. That's what yeah. I was talking about. You know, Yo, did I'm, you did they did they hit you with a copyright? Um, thing no no i heart got me with a copyright strike i gotta go back and look they might have yeah, I they thought got you, me. Nah, I thought you, you know what i can't believe i just picked it up and drank it out the bottle i got a whole glass right here. <laughs> oh okay i was like damn so you can drink yeah. a whole nah so, I, I do nah. drink i do drink those pellegrinos like 40. um since we're talking about um, this whole pandemic shit, did you see that um, this charity rejected two hundred thousand dollars from Takashi Six Nine or Takashi Snitch Nine, oh, as I branded him? Yeah, and this other uh, organization in LA uh, took his tax write off or whatever. His, oh, his check. So a company did take it. Yeah, another company in LA took it. Like wow. A week. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because. Because, well, apparently when I thought it was funny because I was like, damn, the fact that, you know, companies aren't willing to do business with him says a lot. But then when I dug into it, it's called uh, No Kid Hungry Campaign. Right. And um, the, the, the name of the nonprofit is Share Our Strength um, and they run a campaign. And apparently that um, 2015 uh, incident involving the sexual performance with a minor, Takashi pled guilty to that. And so that goes against their um, conduct. So like, they don't, they don't like to get involved with messy situations like that. And instead of Takashi, you know, taking it on the chin, he, he made a comment basically saying he never seen something so cruel. End quote. <laughs> and dude's a clown, man. There's a video, it's a picture of him eating eating his foot or some shit like that. Like he's I I don't know. <clears throat> there's there's a, a there's some kind of agenda that they pushing with this this dude. You know, this is somebody I want y'all kids to look at. I just don't think it's a good example, you know, that these kids are looking at this guy he joined a criminal organization and did something that is very dangerous and you're rewarding that, that kind of behavior and promoting it to a younger generation that because those the kids are the one who likes them they're the ones who listen to him right i just think some of it is not I, I don't think he's an organic superstar like he's got the highest watched youtube video have you heard the song hell no Exactly. I was gonna say it doesn't make it doesn't add up to me. Like some of these numbers are skewed and stuff. The video has like two hundred million views in two weeks. I've I've only heard the song the one time I watched the video. I, I don't hear it in, in the streets. I don't hear it in people's cars. I don't see people talk about it because nobody's outside. You can't be in the streets. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying. You know, people really out here. Like we say, some people bugging, but I just don't hear the buzz. I don't. I don't even. Yeah, when not it like came it, out the first time. Yeah, it was different. The, it was different. Yeah, but it was the little kids anyway. But I'm like, they, they, I don't know, they force certain people into stardom that's really not organically stars. I felt the same way with the little Nas X nigga. Like, that's all forced. He's yeah. a one hit. Little Nas went, X said he want to get some pussy now. Oh, God, see, that'll go viral. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he does his viral. I'm like, they, they made up these niggas as stars. Like, 6 9 went and got the biggest billboard in New York. He's, <laughs> niggas used to laugh at you if you bought your own. Uh, rented your own billboard back in the days. Yeah. Your label did that. Yeah. But he, um, Takashi, I said this before too. Uh, I think he was an industry plan. I think he still is. Because if you oh, look at, 
you look at what happened, right? He basically joined a street gang and then dismantled the street gang, or at least that small set within that street gang. So, sure. and I tried to take down Jim Jones and Cardi B. And, right. He tried to, and it was just like, wow. You know, Brown shit. Everybody's got to go. You know what I mean? It yeah. was like, oh. And then he tried and to so justify. Then you, then you bring. You bring the Snoop factor in it with Meek Mill, and I'm like, okay, yeah. it's obvious. It's like, like, come on, Meek Mill, it constantly keeps going at him. The game yeah. that came back on him, is tried to sit him down too. But and then Snoop, why is Snoop with this big following on Snoop got like 50 million followers? Why has he given this kid so much attention? Yeah. Uh, this is coming off the capture tour Snoop was on for the last couple months after he got in trouble. For his uh his comments about um Gail King. Yeah. <laughs> he put Snoop on the yeah. Uh, Snoop back for himself. So now you got Snoop giving this this boy attention. I'm like, this is some industry playing shit. Right. Snoop, you know, come on, dog. Yeah, but you know, it's because I guess the whole oh so like cause if somebody call you a snitch, like that's that's a, a stamp you don't want. Yeah, that's the do, yeah. But my whole thing, why, like, why are these, you know what I'm saying? Why, these aren't the, any old regular, these are mainstream, big following type of rappers. Yeah. It just seems, or it just seems orchestrated to me. It does. It doesn't seem like break it down like that. It does seem orchestrated. I can see that. But I told everybody from Jump when uh, they said that he was snitching, I was like, his fan base ain't going to care. Like, the people that we we know as, like, real niggas, quote-unquote real niggas, like, yeah, that, that whole street code, that means something to them. His fan base, that shit don't mean nothing to them. Like, they like, whatever, man. Like, that shit. Yeah. They all a bunch of little... <laughs> they little like, white boys. And- yeah. They they tell on everybody anyway. Fucking they don't care. They like look. I just told on my fucking little brother yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Tell on them tomorrow. But yeah, I don't. I mean, I didn't want to um, talk about the kid anyway. But there were some things I needed to point out because um, the fact that a, a, a charity said that we don't want your money is that's that's big because. The point of a charity is to get as much money as they can. If yeah. they don't want your money, that says a lot about you. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. And it also says a lot about why, why y'all turning money down at the same time. You yeah. know what I mean? Y'all kind of going against y'all objective. Yeah. So it's like it's kind of like a crossfire. And then what about the the statement when he like quote unquote apologized for locking niggas up? Where he said, "What if uh, motherfuckers was trying to kidnap your moms? They was fucking your baby moms. They was robbing you. Yada yada yada. You was snitched too." And everybody was like, they kind of sat back and thought about it. Like, well, hold up, would I? It's like, no, like you wouldn't. Like a lot of these kids, they don't know what it's like to be on that side of the wall anyway. So people can sit here and talk all day long. Oh, they snitch this, snitch that. All right, wait till you sitting in that cold ass room with no fucking blanket and nothing to eat. You gonna be trying to get out that motherfucker quick. Like, Yo, I'll tell you everything. It don't matter what they doing. I don't care if somebody trying to rob you or like when you when you cross a certain line, like there's no turning back. I don't care. Like, there's no turn. Like, nah. you made that decision the moment that you decided to step out into the street. So you got to deal with exactly. it. But they, I'll say it's just it's two ways to that. It's just the civilian thing to do is yeah, cooperate. Whatever you want to do, it's a civilian. But once you take that oath to be a part of a crime organization, yeah, you got to go with it. And I I can't believe that um, anybody. I don't know how anybody didn't think that he was going to snitch. And the guys that he snitched on 
this is going to sound crazy, but they got what they deserve. Like, why would you even allow somebody of that caliber to be around y'all doing dirt? Y'all should have let him freaking get himself caught up with, like, trying to put hits on people. Like, what? Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> These niggas, they be in the moment. They just be in the moment, man. Yeah, well, speaking of motherfuckers having a moment, uh, Boosie Badass caught some backlash last week. We ain't get to talk about this, but I think it's super important that we do um, address this for the, you know, the sake of the culture because it's, um, it's giving black men and young black boys and black fathers a, a bad Bad rap. You don't have any kids, do you? Nah. None that you know of? Nah, not that I know <laughs> of. Not, not right now. All right. Well, so Boosie uh, allegedly said that he paid grown women to give his son and nephew's head at like 12. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's. Look, I'm down next to those kind of guys with that like top behavior what we call it that you you know it's like yeah I mean uh yeah I had girls in the back seat and my pops was driving and all kind of, I've heard all kind of shit but normal see no it's not normal I think he should have kept it to himself and his own little circle and shit. that's how y'all yeah. do it. I think I, I think Boosie's mainstream now because his friend and Instagram is kind of like revived his career. He's mm-hmm. become the on the ground, now you got people who really don't believe to him, watch him now, and what he's doing and saying, and they like, yo, what the fuck? Because in mind, we say some shit about Wade. That's another reason why people was on his ass, because right. going in Wade and his gay son, and now it's like, Lucy's like, it almost seems like he's trying to force his son and making sure he's straight by, you know, buying him head from prostitutes and shit. Yeah. And it's not a good look. <laughs> no, it ain't. And that's that's what it was that's what it was on it was on the hills of those comments. So he was basically chastising Dwayne Wade for, you know, letting his kid make that decision or them whatever that decision is. And he was saying, That ain't gonna be my kid. He's like, shit, I made sure basically saying I made sure that they were working right you know, for lack of better words. And it was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he and said. I didn't explain shit either, but I mean, that's no answer to it. Like, come on, man, come on. Like, you don't, certain, just like we, even when T.I. would just, don't, when he put it out there that he was going to his daughter's uh, gynecologist appointment. Yeah. like, when you, whatever you put out there, I mean, that's on you. I can't have sympathy for the backlash that you get. You mm-hmm. put it out there. You get exposed, it didn't get leaked. You hit the send button or the, the live button, nigga, and right. just went off. And you tell he was drunk. He was, it, you know, man. People taking this transparency thing a little too far. Yeah, so you need like, to keep you know, to yourself. Don't need to be on social media. You know what I'm saying? Your boy Young Buck is back out here. I'm, like, I'm glad <laughs> Buck is be liking Buck stuff too. <laughs> I said, okay, you root for Buck. I see you root for Buck. <laughs> hey, listen, man. <laughs> Young Bucks, straight out of Cashville, man. That that was a classic, man. It's a classic. I had the album, but some people talking about it's Asheville now. <laughs> yeah, we got to stop doing that. Like, just because what somebody's doing today does not define what they did. Uh, years ago. Yeah, it doesn't. Because that was a classic. Right. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, come on, man. We do we do we give DMX that same hell? Like being like, nigga, you was a crackhead. Like y'all motherfuckers treat crackheads with so much disrespect. But niggas love DMX, but he also smoked crack. So, yeah. some people like Mr. C reached out to Young Bug, and Young Bug never reached back out. See, some people did try to. Some people did try to. You know what I mean? Oh, Mr. C. <laughs> No, yeah, no. Yeah, look at that. He reached out to Young Buck about it. This is like last year. Damn. And gave him some advice. <laughs> <laughs> gave him some advice, man. What advice does yeah, Mr. C have wild. to give Young Buck? 
and Mr. C got caught up a few times. And now the most cringeworthy, and I don't try to get off topic, but the most cringeworthy interview I've ever listened to was uh, Ebro and them. They called oh, up yeah. Mr. C. He had yeah. just got caught tranny for like um, in the same spot in Manhattan. And they questioned, he's, his voice is cracking up, and it's just people snickering in the background. <laughs> I was like, yo, this. <laughs> oh, fuck is they shit, yo. You, yeah. can't even, you can't even be vulnerable around your friends. No, so no. friends. Oh, man. But yeah, we was on that, that boosty top, but I just kind of got off with that, that, that young buck shit. Just... Nah, yeah, because. I don't. I don't know. Understand. And this ain't the sec. This ain't the first time that this happened with Buck. So that's why everybody's like, "Yo, like." But my whole thing is, man, just live your truth. I don't give a damn, man. Like, I, I think what it what it is going to do is, the motherfuckers going to be like, they ain't going to be smoking after niggas no more. And be like, nah, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want that blunt, bro. Damn, poor Buck, man. He can't catch a break. 50 got his foot on his neck. You know, uh, <laughs> he won't let him out so of a contract. You got, you got 70 likes for your Buck. Well, my thing is, it's not even a sympathy thing. It's just like, damn, man, like, let the man live. Like, it's yeah. 2020. Like, motherfuckers should be able to just do whatever they want to do. We're about it's, to end, it's, like, it's the it's the carelessness and the stupidity with him that's just like how do you yeah. like people who haven't don't know we talking about. He was on Twitter and got caught liking uh, gay shit, and I'm like, how how dumb is he? That do I believe he's the only rapper out here doing that? No, I just think they're smarter at the at the way they do this shit. Right. He's a fucking idiot. I'm like. You know, then he, when people put him on blast, he like a guilty motherfucker. He unliked everything. Yeah, it's like I don't know. Was he high? Like he ain't no press release about it. Jail. Hold on, what? He just got out like a week ago, but he was actually still in jail, I believe, when this happened. You know, people used to be in jail with the phones and shit. Now, you oh know, yeah, 20, yeah, yeah, yeah. Niggas got iPhones in the joint, and um. Guess he was in jail, just fucking bugged out. Sitting in that deli. Let's just go on. All right, man. Damn, <laughs> shit. Well, oh, I, I, that was going to be my next thing. Like, how do fucking rappers survive this quarantine? <laughs> like, how would they survive this? Because you did a video where you were saying that um, some rappers will not survive this pandemic. And a couple of the things you were saying, that they live a high maintenance lifestyle. The fact that they've been in the house for two and a half months and can't do any shows because, you know, since records aren't selling, shows and appearances is how these guys get their their money. So they can't do any of that right now. But also some ways will be like, so how will they make money while they're stuck in the house? That's up to them niggas to find out. I don't know how they make their money, but uh, you just—I think you really just have to save what you got. Um, right. Cause everybody's gonna be not a versus thing that they doing. I don't know if the artists are getting paid, but I wouldn't be surprised if they are because Timberland and Swiss Beats is involved. Right. So I'm sure there's, there's some kind of deal with Instagram or something that's going on there. I haven't looked into it, but you just gotta save your money. There's no reason for you to be buying jewelry. And new cars right now. Uh, you got to just be disciplined and safe. Like, there's no reason for you to go get a fucking Bugatti or a new Lambo right now. But and what about investing, right? Huh? What about investing? Because, like, the money that they do have, like, yeah, you could sit on it, but... Yeah, do that, yeah. But, yeah, so, like... what I mean by, like, so invest, like, do something, get into, like, the media, right? So... You could like, I don't think every rapper should have a podcast because obviously we speaking on boozy and motherfuckers being too transparent isn't the way to go for a lot of these motherfuckers, right? But with the versus thing, you know, they're saying that a lot of artists are seeing like um, streams increase. So like three times the, like triple 
streams increase. But the problem with streams is it doesn't bring in the same amount of money as record sales used to do. So yeah, you're making a little money. Um, Erica Badu, I guess, you know, she sold a lot of her merch off her site the day, you right know, after. Yeah. right after. So it's like, there, there are ways to do it. Um, only fans, I guess, you know, like yeah. <laughs> bottom of the barrel, you know, like if it, if it really gets to that, but I think there are some ways that they can do it because everybody's in the house right now. So if you get online and like you talk to your fans, reach out to them, figure out like, all right, so what can I do? That's, that's only some of the smart rappers. Like I said, the smart ones are going to survive and find out how to get their way through this and maneuver. But the, the dumb ones that just smoke mad weed, do mad drugs, and just they just used to just doing shows, and that's just simplified to them. I don't think that they're, they're not looking at it that way. They're not going to be the ones that survive. And I'm not, I ain't going to call out no names of who I think. I, I'm not I was just about to ask you who you think ain't going to survive. <laughs> yeah, you know, I ain't looking at it, because I don't follow up who all been purchasing. Uh, but right now, I don't think you're gonna see anybody anytime soon flossing any crazy new neck necklaces, jewelry, which any of that. Maybe it's some shit they already got. The smart ones is chilling. The smart ones ain't even got a haircut, probably. You know what I mean? Just, Yo, your, 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 your lineup staying crisp. I thought you was in uh, going around people during this pandemic. How you staying oh, so crisp? I, I gotta cheat sometimes, man. I can't. I'm not a hundred percent. What you want to call it? Safety, safety hazard captain or whatever. Nah, man, I'm staying away from the bar. You see, I'm over here looking <laughs> like crazy, man. Nah, I got I was, somebody to do my shit. I, ain't, I don't go. Nah, because I'm like, like, and I, I've been fucking with my barber for years, but like, you know, motherfuckers, they got to like touch your face. Like, nah, I'm oh, good, man. But you don't even do that no more. Nah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't letting the motherfucker. I got to wait, wait a little bit. Wait till the yeah. barbershops have been open. And then, you know, they got their immunities built up in there before I step foot back in one. Cause I don't, I don't trust it. Um, quickly before we go, um, did you see uh, Future's Twitter rant? Yeah, 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 I did the other day. He looked, he looked like he's, he got a lot of issues with all these baby mamas and all this child support and shit. I think that's why he's gonna start cranking out a lot of these albums. And then I heard he's got some kind of, uh, some with Netflix or some shit. Like he's just trying to. He's got a lot of financial. They they on his ass. So, so he yeah. Is going to shit. Because I was going to do a video about Russell Wilson referring to himself as the uh, the boy's daddy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Russell Wilson was like, "Daddy loves you." And people, it was like a big uproar. Like Future gonna let him call his, you know, let Russell Wilson call himself daddy to the baby. And it's like Future didn't really trip on it. Yeah, but but well, then again, you know that gotta hurt. That gotta hurt, man. Yeah, but I, he seems so occupied with his career and then with all the rest of the fifteen other kids that he, I don't think he really cares as as much as as people. I think the fans care more than he cares. Yeah, damn, that's fucked up. The fans are more of a parent to his kid than he is. That's what it seems like. Did you listen to the album? Nah, I don't really listen to Future. Oh, okay, because now people are like people are starting to turn it. Like, yeah, that album was kind of, kind of mid. Like, see, the thing about none of the music that is being released right now is gonna hit the same because you can't go nowhere and feel it. Yeah, yeah, you can't go to you know, cookouts. And love. Some people are, but clubs until you hear it in a club, certain stuff is just not good. Right. But so now people are hearing music the way I've been hearing music for a while because I don't okay. go places. So when I hear stuff, I'm like, eh, it's all right. They're like, yo, nah, that shit slap. And I'm like, where? You hear madness in a big ass club at night and you got, you done had two or three drinks. It's incredible. Oh, no, th that's a fact. But yeah. I'm saying, like, if the, the music that's been coming out, like, within the last five years, yeah. like, I don't go out. So, like, Y'all be feeling that, yeah. right? So I like I'll hear stuff and I'm like, all right, I'll listen to the album. I'm like, you know, you got a couple bops, but then motherfuckers be like, yo, that shit slap. It's like, really? Like, so you but, ain't listen to the little baby album? Nah, <laughs> was, I can't keep up. Too many, too many little this, little that. Yeah, babies and 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 daddies and nah, I'm all set. And guns and shit like that. Yeah, the the. I, I will say that the the nigga he he likes super melodic like 
and I, I give it up to to a lot of the, the the newer generation. Me personally, I just can't keep up. It's a lot. It's literally a lot. Like, and nigga, I'm I'm old. I listen to fucking forensic files on satellite radio now. Let's do it. Hell yeah, that's the I wildest like, shit ever. I never listened to it. I've heard it. I mean, I've watched it. I watch it all the time. Yeah, you but know? we listening to it is a total different game. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can listen to forensic files. That's crazy. Old nigga shit. All right. So, um, yeah. But, oh, so I wanted to say this about Future. And I wanted to say to, um, because I did a video on this too, but I really wanted to bring it to this channel and tell everybody that um, we as black men, we got to start uh, checking out other brothers. Like when we see them doing something uh, wrong or like just getting out of line. And part of the reason that, made me think about that was when I saw that Joe Biden video and on when I heard the clip and then I saw your video and how you were saying that we keep looking for celebrities to speak up for ourselves, which is another form of we have to check each other. Like, you know, we got to build up ourselves because we out here looking bad and we can't keep letting drugs and alcohol be our conduit to get us to really get into our feelings and emotions and we can't be disrespecting our kids moms even if, even if we don't like them like you know because fuck it like people are people you're not you ain't gonna like everybody forever but, and how old are those kids like that's what i want to know is how old are the kids of the mother he was talking about i don't know he got so many baby moms that's the new one the new one that he didn't want so the the thing is he didn't, he was, he was denying the baby, right? She had him take a paternity test, but he was dodging a paternity test, right? Turns out the kid is his. So he's still like, man, fuck that woman. So he, he basically, she sued him because he was defaming her name in the public, calling her a hoe, saying that um, she sleep around for money and clout and, she stole his last name. I guess he's referring to putting that on the child's birth certificate or whatever. But nigga, if the DNA matches, like it is what it is. That's your kid. Like, yeah. But I don't know. You can't keep up with the music. I can't keep up with Future's baby mamas and all that shit. It's, I just I didn't know. Like, as far as you putting that out there on Twitter, like if it's an older kid, but at some point, them kids, you know, what I mean, they could go back. Right, they're gonna be older. Yeah. Yeah, they just, you just yeah, that's that's some irresponsible shit right there. People like it because it's entertainment, but they don't look at it like that. They don't but that's what it. I said. Like it's all it's like it's all funny because the joke is king, uh, future is the king of toxic niggas. So it's like it's funny to watch him do the shit. But I was like, at the end of the day, the jokes are all funny. The music might be fire, but like reality is going to set in, and we can't yeah. keep. Like letting it, like yeah, I can't keep up either. But I had to do the research because I was like, all right, what is going on? Like, why is he so? Because he he's not one of those. He's not a Twitter nigga, so you don't see him tweeting. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that he went off on this woman or like subliminally said what he said was enough, straight. huh? He was going in for like two hours straight. Right, like that's the most he's ever tweeted. And I'm like, all right, so what's going on here? And then when I did the research. And I found out, like, this nigga got six kids, six different baby mamas. I think he, like, 34. You know what I'm saying? Like, and his oldest son is 17. The nigga was in prison with Young Buck. I know. Hold on, his oldest son, what? 17. He was in prison with Young Buck. Man, this nigga future got grown-ass kids. I feel his pain. My oldest about to graduate high school. Maybe so future get maybe future son can get young buck signed if he was to or like that. I don't know, man. I think we need to keep uh young buck that. away from the young bucks. <laughs> 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 and on that note, uh I think I think that's it, right? I think we we we, we touched everything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so uh, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Ghetto Correspondent News Network. Uh, hopefully we get Raleigh back in here. He done got all Hollywood on us since he went viral. You see this motherfucker out yeah. here doing podcast appearances and shit? Oh, what, what podcast he was on? He was on um, uh, Joe Button's um, intern, Savon. He was on his podcast, the Need to Know podcast. Okay, okay, okay. Raleigh, don't forget who 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 put you on, nigga. 
<laughs> don't forget where you came from. Now here a- trying to trying to glow up on niggas like him, like what? No. Hit this nigga phone. Be like, yo, don't, 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 don't get, don't get famous on me now. But uh, shout out to Raleigh. Shout yeah, out shout to you. Out. Yeah, um, man, hit, hit that like button too. Y'all watch these videos, man. Hit that like button. Just, you know, subscribe, obviously, but share the video too, man. We're, we're, and on that note, we'll talk to y'all next week. All right, maybe uh, you'll get a double dose of this uh, content this week, but uh. Thank you again for your time, brother. I'll be in touch. As always. Good one. All right, bro. Have a good one, bro. Peace out. Peace.